All right, perfect. So indeed, um, my name is Christoph Posch. I'm co-founder and CTO of Prophecy. And um, yeah, let me just start with in a quick introduction to the company. Um, we are uh, similarly as innovation uh, presented by Dylan before, we are a startup company uh, producing event vision sensors since about 2010. Uh, we have our first products uh, it's in, in around 2010 and later we have been uh, started to raise money and to to start building future further generations of event centers and and also we started developing applications and, and software algorithms to actually uh, fulfill a vision task of, of different uh, in different fields that I will describe uh, a, a bit later. Uh, today we are a, a company of about 120 people. We are a European company only. We are we are. As uh, headquartered in in Paris, in France, we have a second uh, R and D office also in France, and we have uh, uh, sales and R and uh, uh, business development offices in China, Japan, and also in, in the U.S. As I said before, we are developing the sensors themselves, so we are we are designing uh, event vision sensors. Uh, such as the ones described by Eric before, for example, Eric, I think, was using uh, uh, our sensors partly in parts of his applications. And we are also developing uh, the software and the algorithms to, to solve the vision tasks. Uh, of course, we are not alone doing this, so we need a, quite a, a large ecosystem around us. We are starting from the bottom right here. We are working with different uh, semiconductor fabrication foundries to uh, fabricate our chips, such as ST or Sony. We are also partnering with uh, CIS uh, found, uh, um, companies like Omnivision or Onsemi. Uh, camera systems, we have partnerships with Lucid and, uh, and Centuryx, for example, to build uh, industry-grade cameras, but also camera um, modules for for different applications such as uh, OMS or Foxconn. There are partners of ours also developing not only ourselves, but also with partners we are developing the applications and the software for these applications, such as Synlabs, for example, for eye tracking, Xperi for driver monitoring, UltraLeap is doing hand gesture for AR, VR, etc. System integrators, of course, need to bring these cameras into a system for industrial vision, for example, such as Bosch or Ramos. And we try to work a lot also with uh, embedded processor manufacturers uh, to, to help them to uh, make the connections between the sensor and the processors from, from uh, automotive to uh, mobile, such as Qualcomm, Intel, AMD. There's, we have a new uh, design kit, Korea design kit, where we use a, an event-based camera together with a Korea um, processor from AMD. Also, we work with Asian uh, chip manufacturers such as Rock Chip or iCatch. Um, so just as a very quick recap, and all this has been explained already by, by Eric and Dylan before, but yeah, event sensors, just in a nutshell again, and maybe this is answering also a few questions that have been coming up before. But especially about event sensors is they are pixel individually uh, reacting to what they see in, in front of them. So each pixel like it looks out into the world and, and detects for itself independently and autonomously uh, what, what's happening in their field of view. So if there's a change of, of, of brightness of a certain magnitude, what we call a temporal contrast, the pixel will react to this and will produce what we call an event. An event is simply defining the space, ten, the spatial temporal point, so the point in space and time where this, this um, this change in brightness has happened. So you can see, for, for example, this is not a video, so I'm, I'm not showing. So this, for example, if something is rotating like like a hand here, then the the result of the of the of the of the data in three three dimensional space time volume will look like a spiral. Here is another little video that that you see that again, as described before, event sensors only react to changes in the scene. So um, the, the background, this, this door, this window in the background, the chair, these, these uh, objects do not uh, change. They do not uh, trigger the sensor to produce any data. This is the, this is the difference to conventional image sensors who uh, the sequence at fixed points in time 
um, acquire the whole scene, acquire a fixed a frame of, of the of the scene, including all the information that's in the background. For example, it is acquired over and over again and doesn't bring you any additional information that you need for your for your vision task. As a result, event sensors typically produce a lot less data, as we had heard before as well, and the temporal position is much, much higher. These, these, these individual pixels react to changes in the scene at, at time scales of the order of microseconds, tens to hundreds of microseconds. So typically you are at, at a factor of 1000 higher temporal resolution in your data when you compare yourself to, to conventional image sensors. And again, also we heard that before, we consume much less power, not only at the sensing stage, but also of course later in processing because you have to deal with much less data. And the dynamic range, that because there was this question before, again, because there is, and Dylan said it before, I say it again very quickly, um, the, these, all these pixels are individually operating. There is no common exposure time. There's no common uh, timing signature that, that drives the acquisition of these pixels. They just re react to relative changes in the scene. And as we heard before, this can be a relative change of a certain percentage, which is which is uh, defined by threshold that is set inside the sensor at a very dark uh, environment, say at a change from one lux to 1.1 lux, a 10% change will emit one event, but also a change from 10,000 to 11,000 lux will also emit one event from a pixel. And as these pixels are independent, this can happen at the same time. So you can look at the sun at, and in, inside a tunnel at the same time, a 10% change in both will, will react, uh, will, will uh, make a pixel uh, release an event. Um, so just a, a little timeline, as I said before, we, we are building uh, event sensors since quite some time now, we started the Gen 1 sensor, already started 2010 here, it's after the foundation of the company in 2014, this was became our first product. And since then we have arrived at the fifth generation of our sensor. Um, we have been at, in parallel developing uh, the software, this is a, a, a software development kit SDK, which helps you to uh, develop your own applications or to, um, to utilize the sensors in your applications and, and try to find out how you can you can actually program your own applications there. There's a lot of uh, code samples inside. There are different uh, algorithms inside you can you can use to 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 develop your own application. For the sensors, we see that uh, we have been changing the, the process. Of course, have evolved over time. So the pixel sizes of the past, where we had large pixels of the tens of micrometers, now we are at the at the order of five micrometer pixels in the future. Uh, the next the next generation coming out will have three micrometer pixels. Um, yeah, as I said, we have a lot of uh, users of this MetaVision SDK already. There are fifteen thousand members now using this this uh, this uh, software development toolkit to develop applications of event sensors. Um, we have heard a lot about applications. Uh, Dylan and and Eric have have described some of them, but indeed it's very wide. You can you can use them. Wherever you use computer vision or machine vision, you can use uh, event sensors. So this goes from industrial automation, industrial robotics, to um, mobile vision, which I will show you an example later. There's, for example, driver monitoring we heard before that includes eye tracking. For example, there's uh, head pose estimation. There is a face detection. Uh, we do. Uh, Object detection, such as uh, in the traffic scenarios, you can you can detect, for example, um, cars or pedestrians, bicycles, other two wheelers, vans, etc. We have a, a data set out that has seven classes of uh, of um, of participants of of uh, traffic participants that that can be uh, that can be detected based on this on this event data using this this neural network approach here. Um, and now I actually want to give you a, show a few videos, and, and I'm I'm hoping really that they will play over over Zoom as well. So what we are doing here is we we are using a, a conventional camera and acquire a frame after frame of this of this scene with very fast motion, and we see that there's blur. We use the the information of uh, that the an event camera records during the exposure time. Of, of the of this of this frame to actually uh, um, compute a, a correction map and as you can see we can we are able to uh, to 
to create out of this out of this uh, blurry picture a sharp picture just by using the the this fine grain temporal information from the event sensor to de blur this image. But this is fully based on on the motion information that is recorded by the event sensor during the exposure time of the of the frame camera. Of course, they both have the same field of view and see the same scene at the same time, and they also synchronized in time. So, so to be able to to compute these correction factors that you need to to actually get from this, if you look at at the location where the tennis ball is to what you see after the deep blur, this is amazing that you can actually from from just this 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 very widely distributed faint information about what's what has happened there to, to actually be able to reconstruct the position and the and, and the view of this ball. Um, we have seen an eye tracking video before by Dylan. I have a similar one here. On the other hand, there's for example like micro gesture um, from so there's there's uh, finger motion maybe I just show this video. So we saw that again with the event sensors due to the high temporal resolution you get much more stable and much more precise uh, um, uh, gaze direction estimation. You can do this with uh, update rates of hundreds of hertz, for example. So uh, event vision is really is a, a very, very a hot candidate of being the, the future technology used for eye tracking. At the same time, what, what this gentleman is showing here is doing, he's doing micro gestures, small gestures with his finger, and the camera is in in, in, in his in the in the glasses, show, looking down at his at his hand, and he's he's controlling the his smartphone by just doing these little gestures with his with his hand here. Um, automotive we have seen before, but here, for example, is a good example of how uh, this high dynamic range um, operational capabilities of the sensor is helping you in, in adverse lighting conditions, and that's what we see here. So here's uh, the car coming in with the high beam on, and we are still able to uh, detect this pedestrian coming from the right side behind the parked car. It's very early, it's detected, and and then the bounding box is drawn around this around this this puppet here. The the uh, uh, the pedestrian is actually detected. That works well not only during uh, night daytime, as you can see here, perfect vision, vision visual conditions, but also during this very adverse conditions here. And we, we have been actually benchmarking these results with the, uh, this is a forward focus with state-of-the-art um, mobile eye plus radar uh, forward collision warning system. And we, we could show that, especially during these nighttime scenarios, the, the detection rate and also the speed of detection of, of the event-based system much, much, was much superior than the state-of-the-art system here in this test car. I skip this one, but there are other applications here like for example, this uh, company in, in, in China is doing fall detection with event cameras. This has a, the advantages not only of, of, of being able to do this with very low power and in, in a very autonomous system, but also privacy protection can be, can be uh, guaranteed much better than with a conventional vision system. There's traffic monitoring here. And this is the last video. This is another another video where, where, where we show, actually, these are real data from, from uh, from Paris Opera dancers uh, being deep blurred using the, the same features that I showed before with the tennis player. These have been acquired during with uh, relatively low uh, um, um, illumination conditions. So they, that's why they, they got this blur in the images. And then using the, the event data again, it could deep blur these images and make these beautiful pictures. And that's all I have for today. Thank you. and. Looking forward to any questions you may have.